Hello, and welcome back to Greg Does Physics. My name is Greg, and today we are going to be doing some physics. For this episode, I will be doing problem 2.52 in Griffith's E&M. And 2.52 asks us this. Two infinitely long wires running parallel to the x-axis carry uniform charge densities plus lambda and minus lambda, given by figure 54, which should look like this. Um, for this video, I'm only going to be doing part A, because part B is quite mathematically involved, and I don't want this to be in, you know, a 45 minute long video. Um, and so for that reason, I, I might come back to it in, in a future video, but for this video, we're only going to do uh, part A for the sake of brevity. And part A asks us to find the potential at any point, x, y, z, using the origin as your reference. So, um, we have two wires parallel to the x-axis with these charge densities. Their distance A uh, from the x-axis in the y direction. And we want to calculate the potential of this whole system. Now, uh, an overarching sort of theme, and one thing that you should really take away from Chapter 2 of, of Griffith's e and uh, on electrostatics, is this idea that in electrostatics, you're going to have three really important quantities. Uh, your charge density, rho, your electric field, E, and your potential, V. And there are ways to go back and forth between these quantities, and depending on what information you have, what which of these you have, um, they can make your whole li your life a whole lot easier to use uh, a specific formula based on which of those things you have to calculate whatever it is you're looking for. And in this case, we want to find the potential. And the standard formulation for potential is this. It's an integral from some reference point, which we're setting as the origin, um, to some other point, which we just want to be any x, y, z position. Um, and it's the dot product of your electric field with dl, and that gives you your potential, uh, and it's negative, um, to make sure that the signs work out. Um, so that if, for example, you have a positive charge distribution, you, have a, you end up with a positive potential. That's why we have the negative there. Um, but how do we get this electric field? Well, um, there are multiple ways that you can obviously calculate the electric field. You could go straight at it with Coulomb's Law. Um, but again, an important thing in this chapter is finding out what your toolkit is when it comes to problems like this, electrostatic problems, and then knowing, based on what you have, which tool you should pick out to make solving that problem as easy as possible for you. And so rather than going at calculating the uh, electric field directly using Coulomb's law, uh, we're going to invoke Gauss's law. And hopefully if you're doing a problem in the back of chapter two, that means you're already familiar but with Gauss's law by now. But if not, it's this equation that says the electric field dotted with uh, for the surface integral of the electric field over some what we call a Gaussian surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the charge enclosed within that surface that you've picked out. Now normally, this would not be a great way to calculate your electric field directly because it would be stuck in here in this integral. But in cases of symmetry, we can choose a Gaussian surface such that we can pull this uh, quantity for the electric field out and it makes it much easier to calculate the electric field rather than having to go through all the rigmarole and geometry that could potentially come along with Coulomb's Law. So I drew a Gaussian surface around uh, one of the lines and we're putting a cylinder over it um, centered uh, at the line and we'll, we'll just say it's like a length L long. And so then if we want to calculate the electric field for the positive wire, then what we would do is we take out this E and then say the magnitude of that times um, dA is equal to uh, lambda L 
over. Epsilon naught. Uh, but our closed loop integral for dA, we would say in this case for the cylinder, dA is going to look something like um, S d phi dz. These are our cylindrical coordinates. And then point it in the S hat direction. Um, and importantly, uh, our quote unquote z in this case actually is more of an x since we're looking up and down the cylinder, which in this case points in the x hat direction. But that doesn't really matter because we're, we're not going to stick with this notation through to the end. Um, so uh, if we were to, so we would have e out, we'd have our, whatever our s is. Um, and then uh, since we expect symmetrically the electric field to point out um, radially, uh, which in this case will be the s hat direction from this wire, then that's why we were saying that e hat, the electric field dotted with this dA, um, we can just pull out the magnitude and dA just take off this s hat because it would just be the, the, the components would be in the, in the same direction for the electric field and this dA. And so then we get closed loop integral of d phi d z. Uh, phi would be evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, z from 0 to our length L. And so then this would become electric field magnitude s 2 pi L equals lambda L over epsilon naught cancel out our L's and we can see that the electric field, at least for the positive wire, is going to be uh, lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught 1 over S. Okay? Uh, easy enough. And so then similarly, uh, our electric field for the negative wire would be the same um, only the S in this case would be the, the quote unquote S from that, that, uh, length of, of charge. And, uh, the lambda would become negative since it's negative lambda. Uh, so your instinct at this point might be to take the electric field for the positive charge distribution and the electric field for the negative charge distribution. And because we know that electric fields obey the law of superposition. You would just add the two together, boom, then you'd have an electric field for everything, and then we would run it through our potential uh, formula. But I'm going to say that that actually is kind of hard to do because to add them up, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to convert them into a sort of universal um, coordinate system since right now they're using different if we were to have a similar formula for the negative wire, uh, they're, they're in different coordinate systems. They're using, looking at different S's. And, um, ah, and different S hats. Um, and to do that, do the superposition, add them up, and then try and convert them into one, you know, maybe the Cartesian coordinate system and then do the potential formulation, that would be very mathematically involved. But importantly, you might remember that another quantity that obeys superposition is potential. So if we can formulate both of these potentials, the potential create for the positive lambda and the potential for the negative lambda, and as long as we're calculating that potential from the same reference point, then we could just add the two together, get them in, uh, get the total potential uh, for the two of them, and then convert that into a Cartesian coordinate system so that we have it in terms of x, y, and z. And so let's do that. So, uh, so our v for the plus lambda is going to be um, the integral from, and it, it's the origin, and um, our, our DL in spherical coordinates is uh, DS, uh, oh, DS S hat um, plus, I think it's S D phi 
B hat plus D Z Z hat. And since we're dotting this DL with the electric field, which again is only going to be in the S hat uh, direction, uh, then all we're going to end up with is, in this case, um, lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught uh, ds over s. And we're, or since we're integrating from s, let, we're looking at the positive. Uh, the origin would be at s equals a. That's this. So a. And then we'll just put it out to, uh, so we, we can put a prime here. And then we'll put it out to some s uh let's call it s plus just to denote that it's the s for the cylinder that goes over the uh, positive lambda and so then what is this this is lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught uh integrating 1 over s is going to give us the natural log and if we put this negative in here then we could switch the limits of integration and it would look like this because it would be ln of a minus ln of s plus if we distribute that negative into it. And so then rv negative is going to be, um, recall that it's the same except we have a negative lambda and it's different s and s hat. Um, so our negative would cancel out with this one and we get lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught integrated from, again, the origin is going to be s equals a in the coordinate system for the cylindrical coordinates that go um, coaxially with the negative uh, lambda uh, wire. And so that'll be A, and we'll run it to something called S minus uh, to denote that it's a distance radially away from the negative wire. And then again, we'll have DS over S, which means this is lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught natural log S minus, or S minus over A because uh, we're doing the same thing. And so then, principle of superposition, our total potential is going to be V plus minus plus V minus. And so then we get lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught ln. And you would add these together. But if you remember your logarithmic rules, multiplying these, we could just, or adding these, we could just instead smash them into one um, term in the parentheses by multiplying the two um, arguments together. And so the a's would cancel and we get s minus over s plus. And so now our final order of business to get this into Cartesian coordinates is to figure out what is s minus and what is s plus. So let's draw this out. Let's look at, let's imagine that we're looking down the x-axis, and then this would be the y-axis, and this is the z. And we can imagine that if we have our uh, positive lambda wire going into the board right here, uh, this is going to be a distance a along the y-axis, and then our S would just be this. And so um, it's not hard to see that if you draw like a, a triangle here, that S plus squared, just pr put, use Pythagorean theorem, and that would be Z squared plus Y minus A squared to account for the offset from the origin. And uh, we can do the same thing for the negative wire. Imagine this is S minus, and this is a distance A. And likewise, using Pythagorean theorem, 
This is also z squared plus, except since it's on this side of the origin, the offset will still be instead be y plus a squared. And so then finally, um, we would have v equals lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught natural log of um, square root z squared plus y plus a quantity squared over z squared plus quantity y minus a squared. But again, um, really important to remember your log rules. Um, this whole quantity on the inside is being raised to the one half since it's square root. And so what we could do is we could take that one half in the argument out and plug it into this fraction. Because if you have the exponent in the argument, then you can just take the exponent out and multiply it by what's outside. And so it'd be one half times what's outside. So then lambda over four, plot, four pi epsilon naught natural log of z squared plus quantity y plus a squared z squared plus y minus a squared and that is our equation for the potential of this setup uh, in Cartesian coordinates and so um, yeah uh, like I said you know it, it's it's good to practice calculating potential or just looking at the tools you have and trying to figure out what the best way to, to calculate it out is. It's also a good reminder that um, oftentimes a lot of the work comes in choosing your coordinate system. If we had just tried to start with doing a straight in Cartesian com uh, components, like let's say we tried to use Coulomb's law in Cartesian components to calculate the field and then from there the potential, this would have been a huge, huge, huge pain. But since we work um, in cylindrical coordinates with each one and use Gauss's law, it makes our life so much easier to get the electric fields and then invoking uh, the power of superposition and uh, just a pretty simple conversion from cylindrical coordinates back into Cartesian components, we can add these up and get our answer without too much difficulty. And that'll be all. So, thank you.